What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today, I'm gonna talk to you about something that 99% of retail ignores, and it is one of the foundational pillars of Wall Street. And I'm gonna talk about the basis of quant trading and how you as a retail trader can take the same data-driven approach to act like a quant trader. Now this isn't like a complicated math simulation, I'm not here to be your new calculus professor, I'm simply here to show you how you can gather data like a quant so you can use your edge in a way that a fund would use it, right? Get the professional data, get the professional approach. So without further ado, let's dive into it and let's turn you into a pro trader. Let's be completely honest, right? Most traders are flying blind. They journal all. This was a win. This was a loss. I traded this. I traded that. Well, let's be completely honest. That is not enough information to make you profitable, okay? Again, most of your trading issues, you might say, oh, it's psychology. Oh, it's my edge. It's my strategy. Want the harsh truth? You probably have a data problem, right? What I mean by a data problem, you might be gathering the wrong data points or you might not be gathering the right data. So we're going to dive into exactly what data you need to grab and how you need to interpret that data, right? Luke Belmer said, everybody gets a data set, but it's about how you interpret it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you an interpretation framework that's going to allow you to get all this data, but more than anything, process it correctly to help you become more profitable. And again, think about it this way, right? You are going to go into surgery and who would you rather trust more? The surgeon who's done it a thousand times and knows exactly what step he did every single time or the guy who did it 50 times, did well sometimes, did bad sometimes, but doesn't know what exact steps he did before what mistakes is made. Well, you're going to trust a surgeon who's got a thousand surgeries under his belt and knows the steps and is constantly improving with the new technologies. Same thing with trading, right? There's a reason why hedge funds in Wall Street invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into their quants and into their data systems because without proper data, they're not going anywhere. So now what we're going to do is you're going to start using the same data points that they've been using because without it, you're completely lost. So what do quants actually do, right? You might have seen these guys on TikTok talking about, I'm a quant trader, this, that, whatever, right? The truth about quants is what quants do is they gather a set of confluences, a set of data, and they stress test it like crazy. They use back testing softwares. They see the expected value, the sharp ratio, the Calmar ratio, right? But essentially what these quant traders do is they have a strategy, a set of confluences, whatever it is, and they stress test it like crazy, right? And then quant traders see what the return would have been, what the average expected return is, what are the expected value, you know, is it positive? Is it negative? How is the sharp ratio looking? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it above one? Is it above three, right? So all these things they do is they just gather data. And now you're not going to have to learn code. You're not going to have to learn any computer science programs that are crazy. All I'm going to need you to do is understand what data points we're going to gather and then what we're going to do with them. So the first data point we're going to grab and probably the most important in my opinion is going to be the expected value. What you're going to do is you're going to grab 30 trades, minimum 30. Don't be lazy. Don't get less. Get 30 at least. And then what you're going to do with these 30 data points is you're going to measure the expected value. This is the average win times your win rate, right? So if your win rate is 60% times 0.6 and then you're going to subtract your losing rate. So if you win 60%, you lose 40%. So times 0.4 times your average loss, right? Measure this in terms of R. What this is going to tell you is how much can you expect to make per trade over a sample of trades, in this case 30, right? So with that metric, right, if your expected value is negative right off the bat, you know that's not a profitable strategy and you need to change the approach. Now, if the expected value is positive, then we can start building a risk profile off of that. However, there's also a very important metric, which is called the sharp ratio. What this does is this measures your return adjusted to your risk and any comparable returns, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the sharp ratio. Again, you can use any basic tool like ChatGPT to calculate it based on your data. But what you want to do with this is if your sharp ratio is less than one, you really got to work on something. Most of the times it's how much drawdown you go into, right? Some people think, oh, I need to raise a profit, raise a profit. Just minimize your downside exposure and your sharp ratio will go up a lot more. If it is around a one, above a one, that is good. And if you have a sharp ratio above a two, you are phenomenal. Contact me because I want to learn from you. Now, nah, but real talk, if you have a sharp ratio above two, you're doing something extremely well. Then the third most important data point you're going to gather is going to be the CalMar ratio. The CalMar ratio, it just tells you your expected annual return. You can do a monthly CalMar, you can do a quarterly CalMar, some Yearly Calmar, yearly Calmar. And again, what this tells you, right, and this is more focused on the longer term, is how much can you expect to make from your trading amongst all your accounts. But now, in order to gather all this data, you're going to need a really good journal that can allow you to track all these data points, right? That's why if you click the link below, you're going to get free access to a custom tailored journal I made for you guys. All you need to do is put your information, just find who's getting the data, and get your journal in there, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to track 30 trades, and then you can use an AI tool, right? You can make a custom AI, you can get a professional tailored AI, and you're going to have the AI analyze it data and give you returns. Again, in this journal, the most important things to track are going to be your win rate, your average win, your average loss, your confluences, your exit time, your entry time, your pre-market routine, and pretty much 
all that because that's how we're gonna not only understand the expected value but if we do it properly we can understand the expected value per setup the expected value at different times of day right that's where we get a bit more nitty-gritty with the data but the thing is you're gonna use this journal and we're gonna get 30 trades and with those 30 trades we're gonna get the data and see just where we need to improve upon and again the biggest part where most traders mess up is they're not honest with the data they go on tilt and they don't put it in the journal they have a bad trade and they don't put it like they put the good trades they, if they lost good oh, I'm gonna put it but if they lost three in a row no I'm not gonna put those like your data is gonna be terrible it's not going to be truly representative of you as a trader or your edge just because it's going to be skewed right so put your ego to the side for a second and make sure you're journaling all the data correctly make sure you're getting all the right data points and just make sure that you're being honest with the data because if you're not you're just not going to see the results and you're not going to get the key points you need to actually become profitable by maximizing your edge right so it's a long process it's boring it's tedious i spend 25 minutes every single day journaling i look at my stream i look at my data points i look at what it did what it did not do like my journal I need to make over 25 entries every single trade, right? Like 25 different things I track per trade. That's how serious I take my data gathering because that's how serious I take my trading career. Now you have the data, you did the journaling, congratulations. You haven't done jack shit. What you need to do now is we start need to start looking for patterns, right? The personal patterns I look for is under what conditions, right, do I perform better, right? So the first thing would be, you know, positive gamma exposure, negative gamma exposure. At what time of day do I have the better trades between 9.30 and 10, between 10 and 10.30, 10.30, 30 and 11. Okay, what set of confluences give me the best expected value? Because not only do you want your expected value for your whole edge, but you also want to make sure that you're getting the expected value for every single setup there is, right? Every single setup type. For me, right? My highest expected value is when we react at a key level and then reject. That's my expected value per trade. There's like 2.7, but I see that setup a lot less. My expected value on a break and continue with structure with some sort of level rejection is less. It's like at a 1.3, 1.4, but it's still profitable, right? That's how you categorize your A plus setups, your B setups and all that. It doesn't mean you shouldn't take the B setups. It just means adjust your risk profile, which brings me to my next point. Understanding that all this data is worthless without proper risk management, right? In order to build a risk profile, you need to understand a couple things. First of all, you need to understand what your goals are. Are you trying to pass a prop from challenge quickly? Are you funded and are you trying to stay consistent? Are you using a personal account and are you using it to build a portfolio, right? Having all these goals in mind gives you more data to understand what your risk profile should be, what your approach should be. And then second, right? What is your expected value? Like on your lower expected value setups, you need to understand that you have a higher losing rate and it's gonna give you less for however much you risk, right? So if your expected value is a 1.5, well then maybe take those trades, you know, just to keep some profits coming in and whatnot. But if then you have a setup with an expected value of 2.8, that's when you know you got a size heavy just because whenever they do play, they're gonna pay you pretty well in the long run, right? And again, if you're not able to manage your risk, then this video is not for you. This only works and this data is only good once you can manage your risk, once you can risk effectively, and once you can get over the whole toddler game of my side psychology made me go on tilt my psychology forced me to risk more like no do grow up okay so that's how you're going to use the risk profile to become better and to use it to leverage the data we collected so now that we understand the first two phases of acting like a pawn trader right data collection and then risk management the third one is going to be implementation now that you have your risk profile and now that you have your sharp ratio and your expected value you're going to keep executing with risk and you're going to gather the same data now you're going to gather data with this risk profile what results do i get with this risk profile what do i get right risking five percent per trade risking one percent per trade risking half of my drawdown per trade, right? And then you're gonna start measuring the data to see how you perform better as a trader and how your setups are more favorable, right? At least for me, when I perform the best is when I start off with low risk, right? Let's say I start off a position with two minis and then after it confirms with a secondary level with a high volume event, I add two more minis or three minis, right? So then by starting small, I keep my losses small and then scaling it does better. And then my expected value in those setups is like a five or a six. Of course, those setups occur once every four or five trading days, if not more. So of course it's harder for me to do that. And then when I take them, I need to assume that, hey, like it occurs maybe four or five times a month and I'm going to lose two of those. So you got to learn how to be disciplined, right? But then you're going to manage your risk and you're going to be seeing, you know, with what approach your risk works better. Now, these are the five mistakes that you need to avoid to make sure that this works fine. Number one is, as I mentioned previously, making sure you're honest. You don't want to be dishonest in your trading journal. Nobody's going to see it. Maybe the AI, maybe me if you're in the program. But other than that, you need to keep it honest because if not, the data is going to be tremendously skewed and it's not going to be an accurate representation of your edge. And it's going to lead you nowhere. Number two is not tracking the market conditions, right? If you're just trading and you're not tracking if we were consolidating, if we were in positive gamma exposure, negative gamma exposure, if we were trending, if we were near all-time highs, if we were dumping, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And number three is not going to be tracking the news of that day, right? Super important factor that many traders don't take into account are economic events. Were you trading during FOMC, during CPI, during NFP, 
Did Trump speak that day? Was there a tariff announcement that day? Or did we have 10 a.m. red folder, 9.45 red folder, 9.30 red folder, 8.30 red folder, right? Because again, at least for me, during NFP and CPI, I do not trade my traditional edge just because I have a model that I've tracked for the past two years that when it does play out, my win rate is over 80% on that model, right? It only happens once per month and maybe I lose, but that model is extremely good on those days and that's why I trade. So that's also really important to understand what news conditions do we have and how they affect, right? And then number four is gonna be tracking your pre-market routine. I cannot emphasize the importance enough, right? You don't need to do like a whole journaling, mindfulness, fucking wellness retreat, but at least get up an hour before training. At least stretch, maybe get some cold exposure, drink some electrolytes, get your brain going, review your journal, right? And again, I see this in my freaking journal. Whenever I get out of bed, just drink electrolytes, go trading. I have good performance, but whenever I get out of bed at least an hour and a half earlier, I do some sort of stretching. I, do, I read before trading. I look at my journal. My performance is a lot better those days. So that tells me you need to do this every day if I want peak performance. The last mistake, right, is not giving your data enough time. I'll see traders who start this process and then in three weeks, they're already telling me like, oh, borrow my expected value. I'm like, dude, you're three weeks in. You have 15 trading days. You want to get at least a month, bro. Maybe two months at least for me, right? I check my data every seven weeks, every six, seven weeks. But I have people that after one week, oh, this isn't working. Like, yeah, of course it's not working, you idiot. Like if you go into college and then because in one week you don't have a degree, you're gonna be mad. If you get a job and you don't get a promotion and in two weeks, you're gonna be mad. No, that's not how this works, right? So make sure you give your data enough time. And then again, guys, trading like a quant. Yes, there's the algos. Yes, it goes way deeper into it. But at the core of it, it's data gathering and it's being efficient with that data. And that's what you guys are gonna do. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe again if you want the journal and the full training that I have here about journaling, gather your edge, gathering your data, just click the link below and I got you guys completely for free. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and comment down below what video do you want to see next. Bye-bye.